Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, coming to Tokyo to join us for this MRB training. I would like to also say my thanks to IGES for continuously collaborating and assisting uh, Clean Air Asia. And um, over the years, we've had a good partnership in terms of moving forward with uh, uh, the co-benefits work and also in terms of developing um, advancements in the methodologies for assessing greenhouse gas emissions reductions and including co-benefits. And uh, I'll be talking about for the next hour and especially for tomorrow, so please bear with me, we'll be talking about what we call the TIMP models. These are the transport emission evaluation model for projects or um, sometimes we call it TEMP for temporary. Um, just to recognize the fact that um, we do know that these methodologies, these tools are meant to be means to be able to um, go about the process of um, implementing a project and not being bogged down by the calculation side, particularly for the CO2 emissions savings um, estimates. And that's usually the, uh, the challenges um, for a lot of cities, for a lot of um, countries. When you talk to the, the transportation departments, when you talk to the climate change um, authorities, particularly in developing Asia, there's a lot of issues with um, data, a lot of issues with the lack of appropriate tools. And um, as you would see later on, these are some of the more pertinent issues that we tried to address when we came up with these models. So the temp or temp models are actually a set of different tools. Um, today and tomorrow, you'll see more uh, of the BRT tool for uh, the bus rapid transit projects. But uh, there's a lot of different uh, tools that are available for different types of projects. So later on, I'll give you a run through of what is currently available on the web and uh, who were the partners in developing the team tools and uh, what are the iterations that uh, we've made and what are the features now and also what are the limitations. So you'll see all of these. And uh, for tomorrow, we'll be doing a run through of the BRT model. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you how to input the data what are the features in the tool that would facilitate uh, input of the data. And I'll also share with you some of the insights <coughs> that we had uh, uh, learned from the application of the team models in, in uh, the different uh, projects that we applied them to. Um, briefly, I would like to introduce our organization. I'm working for uh, Clean Air Asia. We are based in Manila. We are a regional non-government organization working in the Asian region. The headquarters in Manila, but we do have offices in Beijing and in Delhi. And uh, we have local arms in uh, eight countries. Um, our main goal really is to contribute towards the improvement of livability in Asian cities uh, through the reduction of air pollution. and. Uh, also greenhouse gas emissions. And this work that we have been doing in terms of um, creating methodologies and guidance in terms of calculating emissions, these are actually geared towards um, making um, reliable analysis, knowledge, data, and effective tools available to the decision makers to be able to understand the problems and uh, also to identify the solutions to the problems. So one of the main sectors that we work in is the transportation sector. Um, we've done a lot of work for sustainable transportation. As Eric has uh, mentioned earlier this morning, there's more to low carbon transport. It's really, it's all about sustainability in the future. So we're working towards that. Um, later, I'll show some slides on the impacts of transportation on not only GHG emissions, but also local air pollution and how it is affecting the Asian countries and the cities. And uh, we're also working to pull stakeholders together to cooperate um, through better networks and partnerships. 
and though we have programs um, which um, are putting in place science-based and stakeholder inclusive and effective um, uh, pollution mitigation programs in the cities in developing Asia. So just to you know, to stir up your imagination a bit, we've been uh, talking about CO2 uh, this whole day, and uh, I just wanted to put this picture into your heads. Um, what does one ton of CO2 actually look like, or how big it is? Um, for most of the cities that we've interacted with, um, really the problem of CO2 is a bit hard to, to grasp, particularly in developing Asia. There's a lot of different local problems that uh, are more uh, real uh, when it comes to, you know, in relation to emissions, particularly for transport. Um, you can talk about congestion, you talk about accessibility, you can talk about travel time, uh, all these things. At the end of the pipeline, you can probably sneak in the issue of CO2 somewhere there, and later on we'll build the case for, you know, integrating the whole um, CO2 mitigation argument into the equation. It's really about communicating um, how to properly communicate the numbers uh, to the cities in a way that uh, it becomes more integrated, more real, and uh, more um, they can relate to it better. Um, so CO2, it's a, we all know it's a global problem, but in terms of putting it into an image, sometimes it's really um, difficult. Number one, due to the lack of uh, data to estimate, and uh, also the presence of other local problems, such as this one. It's interesting, this is actually a view from our office. We're situated uh, on the 35th floor in one of the buildings in Manila. I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's clear enough. So you can see that, uh, that layer of air pollution, this is uh, around seven in the morning. And uh, during these times, you know, the, the air is quite static and uh, there's no uh, mixing, um, uh, total mixing that is happening. So you can actually see from that view what is happening on the ground. And interestingly, the International Agency on Research on uh, Cancer, which is under the WHO, has announced recently that outdoor air pollution is a leading environmental cause of uh, cancer. So it's now grouped with, with uh, things like tobacco smoke, um, it's uh, confirmed that uh, they are saying that there's sufficient evidence to say that outdoor air pollution is causing cancer to human beings. And uh, they are estimating that in 2010, it's actually responsible to around 220,000 deaths that are related to, to lung cancer. So it's a real problem, um, particularly in developing Asia, where in our, um, our growth, um, is not um, being guided by proper um, trans in integration of transport and uh, land use planning. Uh, there's a lot of issues with the, uh, the, the, the main uh, modes and the, uh, the polluters um, in terms of you know, um, issues like uh, having um, a very old uh, um, fleet, um, not a lot of scrappage programs going on. Um, in terms of public transport, the quality of uh, public transport is uh, usually not there, particularly in many of the major uh, cities in developing uh, countries, and also the uh, provision of uh, non-motorized uh, transport facilities, for example, walking and cycling infrastructure, which actually adds up to the fact that people are, you know, it's either they're, um, they, they, they move to um, private motorized modes and uh, leave the more environmentally sustainable modes altogether. I invite you to go to the website uh, cleanerinitiative.org uh, cleaner uh, and uh, look for this study that we did uh, last year. This is called Accessing Asia. It's about indicators uh, for transportation and also electricity. Um, on uh, emissions and um, a lot of insights in terms of the growth, in terms of the contributors, in terms of the trends. Um, initially, we did an analysis for 13 countries in Asia, and uh, this is the type of growth that you would see um, 
uh, clearly like the road transport CO2 emissions is growing faster than uh, the growth in, in the economy. This means that we're, you know, we're doing a lot more vehicle travel to be able to sustain that uh, level of uh, GDP increase. Um, same with the electricity generation, but uh, you can see the difference in, in terms of the growth. No? So it, it, it uh, implies a lot about the importance of transport in uh, sustaining the, the economy, but it also infers that uh, we have a lot to do uh, in, in developing Asia to be able to decouple the, uh, the CO2 emissions, well, so this is only CO2 emissions. We have some insights also in terms of PM, in terms of NOx, all these uh, um, uh, health-related pollutants. Um, so in terms of the criteria, air pollutants um, from transportation, the main ones, for example, are uh, particulate matter, um, which actually goes through your system, to your lungs, uh, depending on the size. Um, you have uh, the oxides of nitrogen, which actually bonds with the uh, substances such as you know ammonia to form nitric acid, um, <coughs> which can actually aggravate a lot of respiratory diseases. Um, you have uh, hydrocarbons, which would impact your nervous system at the least, and uh, carbon monoxide, which replaces. Um, carbon uh, or replaces oxygen and uh, um, sticks to the blood cells, which is actually very dangerous if you're exposed to it in a, a long-term basis, it can actually lead to deaths. So it's a question now, for particularly for developing nations in Asia, um, it's a question of pathways. Where do we want to go in the future? Um, when we talk about transportation, not only in terms of CO2, but also in terms of infrastructure, in terms of access. This is just a graph that uh, relates the, the, the GDP growth with the road per uh, person kilometer per capita being traveled uh, in, in different countries. No? So this is a collection of uh, data for um, countries even outside Asia. So. The main thing here is that there are trajectories, um, but the question really is how do we get to the lowest change in terms of road um, or private road per uh, person kilometers traveled to be able to s sustain the impending growth in our countries. So Southeast Asia is experiencing a lot of um, economic growth in recent uh, years. It's about um, how do you make it make transport more environmentally sustainable and how can you do that um, in relation to your um, economic growth in the future.